Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. I am here with uh, Patreon supporter Mitchell Helt. How you doing? Hello. Um, we're excited to have you on the show again. Uh, for everybody watching, this is what you get at the $25 level. Once a month, we can have a Skype interview and we can talk about whatever subject you want to talk about. Uh, Mitch has been bringing up some really wonderful stuff to our attention. Uh, you have an engineering and, and manufacturing background, basically. So your your approach to thing, and you have a cat. You have an amazing cat. <laughs> Um, so you've really shed some light on some stuff on some many, many solutions to some environmental issues. But one subject that we have not talked about yet is water, mainly the contaminated water in Flint and other cities. <clears throat> you know, we've talked about this. We had, uh, I believe Lucas Pompey on the show, he talked about there's something like there's over 300 some cities that have unsafe wa- uh, le- lead levels in in the municipal water. So what, what are you seeing out there um, from what you do uh, with regard uh, to the issues of water and how do you think we can address it? In, in electronics manufacturing, uh, pure water is necessary for the really high tech stuff. And the water has to be extremely pure. So uh, studying means of purifying water in large amounts inexpensively is very important to, in the electronics industry. So using that expertise, uh, I personally, once, once you have it, you, you're to- totally grossed out by tap water. Uh, and uh, there are many different features to water that people need to understand. First is that there is no such thing as clean water in nature. The water in rivers is actually... Um, uh, if you injected it in you, you probably die. Uh, the uh, um, so, but drinking it, your body filters out things in the right way for it to work. So that's how fish can live in water. In seawaters, uh, also, it, it's really not even what, what we would call water. So seawater is a solution of a bunch of contaminants necessary for fish to live. And if the water was absolutely clean, the fish would only live seconds. <laughs> so there's this balance you need for life. Uh, it needs to have a certain amount of junk in the water for the water to be okay for fish. Now, as we eat, we can take very pure water and drink it. And the foods that we eat will contribute nutrients as well to make up for that water that we're drinking. Uh, so a, a good clean water can reduce the load on your kidneys mm. uh, and, and other health issues. So um, you don't want extremely dirty water. You don't want extremely bad water. There are a lot of things out in people's water uh, that you can go down and this requirement. If you're on a municipal water supply, uh, you can go down and you can ask for your local water report. And I think it has to be done at least every two years. And they take samples and they have to post somewhere in their building and, or make available to anyone who asks what's in the water. Mm. And this is an extremely detailed report that will tell you a breakdown of chemicals, uh, radionuclides, uh, and other materials. It's several categories. I don't want to bore everybody with what the categories are. But one of them will say alpha emitters. Outside the body, alpha radiation is the weakest. It can, the dead, dead skin cells can bounce away. Uh, outside the body, only your eyes and your lips are vulnerable to alpha radiation. But inside the body, it's the worst. Because it can radically change chemistry. So one of the first things you want to worry about water purity is it radioactive. Well, radiation of water mostly is pretty easy to take out because normally, unless it's tritium, which doesn't happen in high volumes, uh, is going to be some other large atom. Yeah, I think we need a little bit more quiet here. (laughs) (laughs) The purring can get a little bit loud sometimes. Well, what's your cat's name? Uh, that's Victor. Hi, Victor. And uh, um, but uh, uh, 
so we can deal with clean water, but in nature, if it's not, if it's too clean, it's mm-hmm. the things just algae won't grow. There's no food for the plants. So seawater is an extremely uh, crucial balance of nutrients and, and uh, in order for fish and wildlife to live. So we can't just clean seawater mm-hmm. easily. We have to, if we take the seawater and clean it, we can have to. Uh, put some contaminants back in it for, for life to continue. Now the same same thing is true back back here for clean water inland. Uh, normally, if you buy a really good grade water, which will say RO on the bottle, not drinking. Drinking water is one of the worst. Or not excuse me, excuse me, got that wrong. Drinking water is okay. It's the ones that are labeled spring water are not okay. How's why? Because uh, spring water can have anything in it, radium, uranium. Wow. Anything that's found in the spring. Uh, there could be a herd of deer taking a, a, a piss right beside that when that water was sucked in. That's in your spring water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, uh, well, fantastic. Of, I feel so much better now about all the spring water I've drank. Yeah, you can have up to eight grams of free feces in that little bottle you can get. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so how do we then so well, – getting to municipal yeah. waters and getting to what happened in Flint and is still happening in Flint. How does this happen and how do we deal with this? Well, Flint has multiple problems. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I've been looking at uh, lately just just the cities that – uh, Flint, as far as they go, is not among the worst. Oh, wow. Uh, we'd have to go to areas like West Virginia to actually get the really bad water. When they mine coal, there's a lot of uranium in coal and all kinds of other nasties that are bad for the human. Uh, vanadium, 1.8 grams in your debt. Uh, so, uh, you know, these minerals and stuff that get in your water, uh, beryllium, very bad for the lungs, it, 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 all, all of these things that are floating around in their water. That because of the mines have all been going out in their streams, they're probably the worst. If you can clean the water for the people of West Virginia, you probably can clean. Oh, sorry, uh, you can probably clean the water anywhere. Okay. So, uh, uh, and water is very easy to clean, but basically what you do is you'll use three gallons of water and you'll use one gallon of water and put all the waste into. And um, one of the, the least expensive methods is the method like a uh, Navy nuclear carrier would use to filter their water is called RO, or reverse osmosis, where basically there's a, a membrane and the water squeezed through tiny holes. And the little tunnels are just big enough to let water through and all the big con- contaminants stay behind. What, and, uh, what do you do with the contaminated water that, that is d- left over from the process? Right now, most of it uh, is just goes down the drain. Overall, these contaminants would have gone through down the drain in the same quantities. Because even humans, as we take in, oh, we right. give out. So we basically are, are not disturbing that pool. But we're uh, giving ourselves better. Maybe in the future, we can start addressing toward if we clean the water, what can we do with the with the waste? Because it certainly would be better to at that point that it's captured, and you know that 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 one part is, is bad. Uh, and uh, I, I've been looking at uh, ultrasonically treating that last bit uh, because uh, with the ultrasonic, I could take a, a clean vapor fog out, and I'm left with just a, a, a concentrated, very concentrated uh, contaminant. The question still is, what do we do with that contaminant? But the water, uh, again, half the year, year and I will be need to humidify. Uh, okay. uh, so what other what other um, sort of uh, ways or programs that you have seen that could be implemented more on a mass scale? Well, basically. If we introduce clean water to these houses, Flint especially, and the older homes, even even in, in West Virginia, we introduce water into the house that's clean. The pipes will be 
uh, are still laden with a concentrated poison on the inside of the pipes. So it'll go through. Basically, at the point of where you're going to take off the drinking and cooking water, you can never use those pipes again. Rather than trait, than uh, uh, rather than replacing it, because it really is an extreme financial burden. To he's not small. <laughs> Um, it's such an extreme financial burden to replace every water supply system in every house. Mm. Yeah, a small um, filtration system with, with an RO membrane in it um, can be put in, and you can tap off enough to take 50 to 75 gallons per, of water per day uh, for drinking and cooking. Uh, if you wanted to go whole house, you'd have to use a lot more water. Now, in California, uh, using wasting one gallon to get four is going to be an issue. Right. Uh, so, uh, if you redirect the used water for uh, flushing toilets, the drainage water, uh, put it in your gray water line, that would probably be a net, a net zero for California, where... They wouldn't notice the waste because you're wasting so much water for your daily uh, things like flushing anyway. Mm. Or, or your first wash could be with the dirty water the clean, or rinse with the clean water. Right. Uh, and that would be a nice thing for uh, manufacturers you know, to start saying, hey, uh, we need to have systems out there that address these issues of what to do with waste water that we have and, and how. Uh, but back, back to the house, by using a, a clean line that doesn't have uh, the drinking water, <clears throat> that doesn't use your old dirty pipes, it's really not that expensive. Uh, most houses could probably be done with installation costs less than $500. And with uh, a really fancy system, usually less than $1,000. And with that, <clears throat> let's say... Uh, this 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 one town I was looking at in, in West Virginia, they had a, a chemical spill <clears throat> of a chemical I can't even remember the name of. It was abbreviated MCHM because nobody can remember it. And uh, basically it caused blisters. I mean, a, a youngster, if they got it in their, their uh, formula, it could kill them. Now, these leaks tend to happen at night. So somebody could could get the exposure not even realize it. Uh, and we're going to be fighting these issues so long in, uh, on the public public side that the, the issue is, okay, let's just put these filters in all the houses. Right. <laughs> and, uh, okay, we, we can work out the political issues later. But right now, these people need an answer. And often when they need water, they... They need it that day. They don't need to wait four days because water we can't wait a long time for. But they need to be able to just walk out in the sink, uh, feel that they can get some uh, a drink and not worry about it. <laughs> Turn on the news and if they hear, oh, we have another big HMC or HCM whatever leak again, uh, uh, know that they have to avoid touching the tap water. and But they don't have to wait for a truck to come up and give them their daily do or ration of water that they can filter what they need on site immediately. Uh, and I, I currently have a reserve of three gallons. I could bump that up, but I don't think I really need to. Mm -hmm. And and I have a water jug, so I, I always have five other gallons that are uh, beside, you know, uh, for the kids to pull for a drink anytime they want. So really, so we're you're saying for very nominal cost, we could go into places like West Virginia and Flint, Michigan, and at least immediately, um, you know, install filtration systems into the homes like we could do that today. So we just need a politician to earmark that money and and make it happen. I'm, I'm not waiting. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make arrangements right now. Just go ahead and do it. We'll find a politician. Because I, I think that if we wait for the political side, it's going to be... Um, years, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're going to see another another event any day. All we need is a huge rainstorm. We're going to have another uh, another event where we saw 
people all along the river system from uh, West Virginia throughout the entire Ohio River Basin suddenly couldn't drink their water overnight, didn't know what was going on. And uh, it can't be that hard to raise some funding to get it going. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, if we could only do 200 houses, still we could be a model for uh, other people to uh, say, okay, if we could do this there, why can't we do this in something that's only as bad as Flint? And I'm not saying Flint isn't bad, but compared to many of the other cities that have heavy nitrates and stuff in their water, they just aren't getting the news coverage. So a lot of cities, the last thing they want, they're, they're trying to get businesses into their town. They're trying to get people not to move away from their towns. Uh, and the last thing we want to say is, well, yeah, we can't get our water thing under control. <laughs> uh, no, and it's, I think, because it's so terrifying for people, like, because of obviously water is so necessary for daily life. Mm -hmm. I think that fosters more um, secrecy or, or cover up or not, let's, not, let's at least just not talk about it, you know, because people don't want to really face the severity of it because it's the kind of thing that can make like panic set in or at least max mass exodus people just saying well, i'm out of here we're leaving you know um mm -hmm. so well right now in the united states if you're looking at water quality and you want to move somewhere where there's water quality you don't have a lot of options uh and, and as i'm saying go to your municipal water and, and ask for the report and uh uh, by law, still, it might not be for long, but they're still obligated to to inform you if you ask. Well, that's, everything is that's great though for people that anybody watching out there, guys, go to your local uh, water district and get this municipal report that Mitch is talking about, and get yourself informed. And then when you know what, whether or not or the the state of your local water, then you can really take action. Either one, just going and getting a filtration system put in immediately, and then also starting to petition and, and do all those other long-term fixes. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty yeah. startling, man. Yeah, because we, we figure that in West Virginia, these people need these systems, and they can't afford them. Of course, uh, I'm the, sure you the, the, the people that need it the most can't afford it. Well, that's always the case. It's that so, the poorest communities are always the most taken advantage of because they know they can't fight back. So we, we talked to a, a, a water filtration place and you know, just tried to see what we could get with the uh, best deal they could give us on some water filtration systems to take there. And uh, uh, whatever kind of funding we can raise later on, uh, we'll put in as many filters as we can for these people. So, they're so, devastated. They've lost their jobs and their environments. Totally so how are up. you doing this specifically? Is there a place anybody can go donate or get involved with? Or are you not there yet? Or We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure we have a plan that will be functional before we ask for a dime. That's a good <laughs> idea. And you've been talking uh, about this with Stevie from Red Economics? Yes. Uh, uh, she, she is uh, looking at... She knows where the towns are that are devastated. Uh, and uh, so she is looking into where would a, a few hundred of these units do the most good. Uh, these are people that are, are getting extreme birth defects or dying very quickly from mm -hmm. from really uh, badly um, tainted water. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we took out a website this morning. And uh, we haven't gone as far as putting, you know, building it or anything like that. Well, I, first of all, good for you and Stevie for doing this. And, you know, keep us up to date when there is a website that we can tell people to get involved with. Um, uh, by all means, let us know. And I, it's really impressive to see what you and Stevie are doing with this specific issue. I mean, she really... I mean, you want to know, I always tell people, if you want to know what's going on in West Virginia, watch her show. And, uh, you know, I don't think most of America realizes the severity of the poverty in West Virginia, the opioid epidemic, the joblessness, and now, of course, contaminated water. And if you think it couldn't happen in your state, 
you're wrong. It could happen pretty quickly um, if it's not already happening. So, and, and this is a good way to start other industry in, in West Virginia. Uh, just to put in 200 units, we're going to need to hire a team and train a team. Uh, suddenly, West Virginia will have uh, a very, very good trained team of what to do to go in and do this for for a community that's in trouble. It's such a great example, Mitchell, of, of, of how um, protecting the environment can create jobs. I mean, think about this. If we were to go through everybody in West Virginia, or at least along this, this these contaminated areas, and how many filtration systems is that? Who's manufacturing? You could you could set up manufacturing there. You could the installate the installers. Obviously, these are all people that could have jobs. You could really go after the uh, you could protect the environment and go after unemployment in one fell swoop. Yeah, once, once they have the people there that know how to do clean water. Um, currently, our, a lot of our spices come from a lot of environmentally challenged areas in the you know, India and through Vietnam that had just devastating chemicals all around them. Uh, one of the best places to grow spices uh, that we're going to lose access to because of climate change, India uh, going into a drought in the areas where we get black pepper and uh, the rains in um, Vietnam are also dampening their pepper so we could lose black pepper in the United States. Uh, the best place to start growing it would be uh, uh, through clean water made in uh, in West Virginia, man. So they would, if we can teach them how to do water. Uh, next thing we can teach them how to grow uh, the spices we need, just to feed the restaurants in New York City alone. Uh, you know, when I started looking at it, the Netherlands uh, is second in production of produce, food for for the world after the United States. And uh, I started looking into it, and, I, and uh, basically the same methods applied to West Virginia could be done with greater access to natural energy, solar power, wind, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it could very easily be if we could get that trained, we could take uh, West Virginia and having it be second in production to Iowa. That's fantastic, man. I give you so much credit. I love doing these with you because you connect all of these dots that all they do is solve one problem after another. And it's such forward thinking that uh, this Republican administration is completely devoid of and the majority of the Democrats are devoid of it as well. So it's – and I, I applaud you and Stevie for just like, well, we're not going to wait for politicians. We're going to do this ourselves. And uh, well, it's great information, and it's a, it's such a clear the solution. You know, we could take all these out of work people and out of work coal miners because coal is a very dirty business. We could get rid of that dirty <laughs> industry, replace it with a clean one, and give people jobs, and clean the water, and uh, produce black pepper. Like who knew? <laughs> All of those things could happen. And I bet you when you have jobs and opportunities, here's a shocker. I bet you the opioid epidemic starts to decrease. Well, we think the opioid epidemic will go away once we teach them how to make or how to grow cocoa. Uh, because uh, <laughs> once you have chocolate. <laughs> yeah, you're set. Then you don't. <laughs> uh, but I call it ecological uh, uh, judo using the force of nature to solve its problems yeah. and using each problem, uh, the energy from each problem to solve the next. Well, that's great, Mitch. I really, uh, I really appreciate it. Any final thoughts here before we sign off? No, always comedy is the first step to getting something done. <laughs> well, um, thanks man. Thank you for doing the research and starting this program with Stevie and by all means, Let's uh, give us updates as you guys progress with this and when there's a functional website for people to donate or wherever. However people could help, uh, by all means, let us know. So, thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Tell Victor I said thank you for his drop in appearance. Uh, it's always great to have two guests on the show. 
And uh, thank you to everybody watching. Please uh, like and subscribe to the videos. YouTube has been demonetizing and they've been unsubscribing people. So make sure you're subscribed because I know people have said, oh, Graham, I've subscribed to you three and four and five times and they keep unsubscribing me. Uh, I'm in the process of moving, uh, not, but putting videos on daily motion as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and uh, we're all making Gotham great.